welcome to this session of the course fluid machines. In today's tutorial class, we are going to solve problems related to centrifugal pumps. So, let us start with problem number 1. So, the problem statement is given here. So, the statement is as follows an impeller with an eye radius of 51 millimeter and an outside diameter of 406 millimeter rotates at 900 rpm. The inlet and outlet blade angles measured from the radial flow direction are 75 degree and 83 degree respectively, while the depth of the blade is 64 millimeter. Assuming zero inlet well or swirl velocity, zero slip and an hydraulic efficiency of 89 percent calculate the volume flow rate through the impeller, the stagnation and static pressure rise across the impeller, the power transferred to the fluid and the input power to the impeller. impeller. So, let us first note down the important given quantities in the problem. So, given quantities are the I radius which is 51 millimeter. So, I radius is the radius of the uh, pump at the inlet out outside diameter. So, R 2 2 R 2 is 406 millimeter where R 2 is the radius at the outlet of the pump pump impeller rotational speed n is 900 rpm width of the blade is 64 millimeter and hydraulic efficiency is given as 89 percent so these are the given quantities now we have to determine the volume flow rate through the pump stagnation and static pressure rise. So, let us represent stagnation pressure at the outlet as P 0 2 and stagnation pressure at the inlet as P 0 1. Then the rise across rise of stagnation pressure across the impeller is P 0 2 minus P 0 1. So, we have to determine this. Similarly, we have to determine the static pressure rise which is P 2 minus P 1. Power transfer to the fluid and also the input power to the impeller. So, let us first look into the velocity triangles. So, this is the inlet velocity triangle and the blade angles are represented here. So, the inlet and outlet blade angles are measured from the direction radial direction as 75 degree and 83 degree respectively. So, radial velocity makes an angle with the flow direction as 75 degree. So, this is the blade angle here at the inlet. Similarly, radial velocity at outlet makes an angle 83 degree, uh, 83 degree with respect to the flow direction. So, this is here 83 degree. Now, at the inlet velocity triangle we have used the fact that there is zero inlet well or zero inlet swirl velocity. So, at inlet V w 1 is 0 that we have used to draw this diagram. Similarly, at the outlet we have used the fact that zero slip. So, the radial velocity leaves at an angle with uh, which is specified by the blade angle. In the presence of slip, this V r 2 may be deviated from this angle. So, in the absence of slip, we have drawn this diagram. So, no slip effect. So, with these considerations, now we determine the flow rate through the pump. So, flow rate Q will be the flow velocity say at the inlet times the 
cross sectional area at the inlet. So, here we are using subscript 1 to represent inlet quantities and subscript 2 to represent outlet quantities. Now, A 1 is the cross sectional area at the inlet is 2 pi r 1 times b, b is the width of the blade. So, this is 2 times pi times r 1 is given as 51 millimeter. So, 51 times 10 to the power minus 3 and b is given as 64 millimeter. So, this is the cross sectional area in meter square. Now, what is V f 1 or here there as there is no swirl component of velocity V f 1 is same as V 1. Now, from the velocity triangle we can relate V 1 to U 1 in terms of angle beta 1. So, tan of angle beta 1 will be V 1 by U 1 or V 1 is U 1 times tan of beta beta 1. Now, we have to determine u 1 and beta 1. Beta 1 is nothing but 180 degree minus 75 degree or rather is 90 degree minus 75 degree. So, this total angle is 90 degree this much is 75. So, beta is 90 minus 75 degree. Now, to determine u 1 So, u 1 is peripheral velocity of the impeller at inlet that can be determined by this rotational speed of the pump. So, pi d 1 is the inlet diameter which is 2 r 1 n is the rotational speed in r p m. So, pi times 2 times r 1 is given as 51 millimeter. So, 51 times 10 to the power minus 3 n is given as 900 r p m divided by 60. So, u 1 is 4.81 meter per second. Now, I will substitute u 1 and beta 1 in this relation to obtain v 1. So, v 1 is u 1 tan beta 1 is equals to a 4.81 times tan of 90 degree minus 75 degree. So, which is 4.81 times tan 15 degree is equals to 1.29 meter per second. So, inlet flow velocity is 1.29 meter per second. So, the flow rate expression of which we have determined earlier as q equals v f 1 a 1, where v f 1 is a 1, because there is no swirl component of the flow. So, q which is v f 1 a 1 is same as v 1 a 1. So, 1.29 times a 1 is 2 times pi times 51 to 10 to the power minus 3 times 64 to 10 to the power minus 3. So, this you can obtain as 0 0.026 meter cube per second. So, the first result that we are interested in is the flow rate now we have obtained. The second quantity of interest in this problem is the rise in stagnation pressure across the impeller. So, let us find that. So, rise in stagnation pressure or which is also called total pressure is P 0 2 minus P 0 1 let us represent it in terms of head. So, P 0 2 minus P 0 1 over rho g is 
p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2 g this is the stagnation pressure head at the outlet and p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2 g this is the stagnation pressure head at the outlet uh, inlet of the pin pillar. So, here we are assuming one thing that the elevation at the inlet is same as the elevation at the outlet. So, this is one consideration. Now, we can rearrange this expression in this way p 2 minus p 1 by rho g plus v 2 square minus v 1 square by 2 g. This is nothing but the h which is total head developed by the impeller. impeller. In a more general case, this will contain z 2 minus z 1, but as we are assuming z 1 is equals to z 2. So, this will be 0. So, only pressure and velocity heads will be there in the total head expression. Now, we have to find this total head. Regarding this, we can use the hydraulic efficiency which is 89 percent. So, let us write the definition for hydraulic efficiency. Hydraulic efficiency of efficiency of the pump. Hydraulic efficiency of the pump is given in this way it is the ratio of total head developed by the pump over the work head imparted by the rotor to the fluid. So, total head developed developed by the work head imparted to the fluid. So, here the total head the total head developed is h and the work head imparted to the fluid will be v w 2 u 2 by g. Here also we are using the fact that uh, the swirl component at the inlet is 0. So, from here we can obtain H as eta hydraulic times V w 2 u 2 by g. So, eta hydraulic is given as 0 0.89, but V w 2 u 2 are not known till now. So, let us first find V w 2 and u 2. So, determination of u 2 is very straightforward. So, pi d 2 n by 60, where d 2 is the diameter outlet diameter of the impeller. So, outlet diameter of the impeller is given as 406 millimeter. So, 406 times 10 to the power minus 3 n is 900 rpm over 60. This you can obtain as 19.13 meter per second. Now, to determine v w 2 let us look into the velocity triangle. So, v w 2 can be obtained from this triangle if you look into the tan of beta 2. So, tan of beta 2 will be this height which is v f 2 or flow velocity at outlet over u 2 minus v w 2. So, u 2 is this much and v w 2 is this. So, this distance will be u 2 minus v w 2. So, tan beta 2 is equals to v f 2 by u 2 minus v w 2. So, tan beta 2 is equals to v f 2 
by u2 minus v w2 beta 2 is nothing but 90 degree minus this angle so beta 2 is 90 degree minus 83 degree equal to 7 degree now in from this relation we can say v w 2 is equals to u 2 minus v f 2 by tan beta 2. So, now we have obtained u 2 as 19.13 and expressed v w 2 in terms of u 2 v f 2 and beta 2. Beta 2 is known. Now, how to relate v f 2? Now, from the continuity of flow. So, flow continuity flow continuity gives that inlet flow will be same as the outlet flow at steady state. V f 1 is nothing but V 1 because there is no swirl component. So, this is equal to A 2 V f 2. So, using this relation we can write V f 2 equals to A 1 V 1 by A 2. Now, V 1 we have previously obtained as 1.29 meter per second and ratio of area, area ratio will be nothing but ratio of their respective radius or diameters. So, diameter at inlet, diameter at outlet and V 1. Diameter at inlet will be twice of radius. So, 2 times 51, 2 times 51. 10 to the power minus 3 and diameter at outlet is 406 10 to the power minus 3 and V 1 is 1.29. This gives V f 2 as 0 0.324 meter per second. Now, we substitute V f 2 and u 2 and beta 2 in this relation to obtain v w 2. So, v w 2 is u 2 minus v f 2 by tan beta 2. u 2 we have obtained as 19.13, v f 2 is 0 0.324 and tan of 7 degree. So, this is v w 2. Now, head is hydraulic efficiency times v w 2 u 2 by g. So, let us substitute all, all the quantities v w 2 is 19.13 minus, minus 0 0.324 over tan 7 degree times u 2 u 2 we have obtained as 19.13 over g 9.81. So, this will be 0 0.89 and this quantity the head imparted by the impeller comes as 32.16. So, this will be 28.62 meter. So, head developed is 28.62 meter. Now, previously we have related this head developed with the rise in stagnation pressure. So, rise in stagnation pressure head is same as the total head developed by the impeller. So, P 0 2 minus P 0 1 over rho g is h which now we know 28.62 meter or P 0 2 minus P 0 1 which is the desired quantity of interest is rho g times 28.62. So, rho for water 1000, g is 9.81, 28.62. So, this you can obtain as 280.76 kilo Pascal. So, P rise in stagnation pressure across the impeller is 280.76 kilo Pascal. Another desired quantity of interest is the rise in static pressure. So,
so rise in static pressure can be obtained here so h is p2 minus p1 by rho g plus v2 square minus v1 square by 2g so this relation gives p2 minus p1 by rho g equals to h minus v2 square minus v1 square by 2g so this relation can be used to obtain the rise in static pressure so before that we know h we know v1 so we have to determine v2 to determine v2 let us first go into the velocity triangle so v2 can be obtained um, from this triangle as square root of this which is vf2 or let me draw the triangle separately this is v2 this is vf2 this is v w 2 this angle is 90 degree so v 2 will be square root of v f 2 square plus v w 2 squared we have previously determined v f 2 using the flow continuity as 0.324 so let us write this down here meter per second and v w 2 we have obtained in terms of u 2 and v f 2 as this so let us substitute this 19.13 minus 0 0.324 by 10 7 degree so this this will be also in meter per second so v 2 can be obtained by substituting this so 0 0.324 square plus 19.13 uh, 0.324 over 10 7 degree squared so this you can obtain as 16.49 meter per second so now we can substitute v1 v2 in the expression of static pressure rise so this was the expression for static pressure rise in term in head so static pressure rise p2 minus p1 rho g will be h minus v2 square minus v1 square by 2g or in terms of pressure this is rho g h minus rho v2 square minus v1 square by 2 so let let us substitute all the quantities so p2 minus p1 will be rho is 1000 g 9.81 and h we have obtained previously so h value of h is 28 0.62 minus rho 1000 v2 is 16.49 squared minus v1 so v1 now value of v1 we have obtained previously so, so v1 is obtained as 1.29 meters v1 is 1.29 so substituting all these quantities we finally obtain p2 minus p1 as 145.58 kilo pascal so p2 minus p1 which is the static rise of pressure across the impeller is 145.58 kilo pascal now let us move towards determining the other quantities so next we have to determine the power transferred to the fluid now power transferred to the fluid is given by 
power transferred to the fluid is rho q g h where rho is the density of water q we have obtained as 0 0.026 g is 9.81 and h is 28.62 so this will be 7.3 kilowatt another quantity of interest is the input power to the impeller so input power to the impeller will be power given to the fluid over the hydraulic efficiency so power given to the fluid is 10 to the power 7.3 times 10 to the minus 10 to the power 3 and hydraulic efficiency is 0 0.89 so this will be 8.2 kilowatt so this is the input power to the impeller which is the power transferred to the fluid over the hydraulic efficiency so let us move to solve our next problem so it is a simple problem related to centrifugal pump so this is problem number 2 now calculate the least diameter of impeller of a centrifugal pump to just start delivering water to a height of 30 meter if inside diameter of impeller is half of the outside diameter and manometric efficiency is 0 0.8 and pump runs at a speed 1000 rpm so pumps runs at a speed of 1000 rpm the static lift is 30 meter and the inside diameter d1 is half of the outside diameter these are the given quantities now we have to find the least impeller diameter of the centrifugal pump to just start the delivery now in this case one thing to note here is that the pump is fully primed there is no air inside the system and the when the flow starts at this situation the absolute velocity at the inlet and outlet and also the relative velocities are negligible or equal to zero so only the impeller uh, speed is present so the head developed by the impeller will be the centrifugal head so when the power pump is just starting at this point the head developed by the pump is centrifugal head so let us just find the centrifugal head h which will be u2 square minus u1 square by 2g now the manometric efficiency is given by the static lift static lift over the head centrifugal head that is u2 square minus u1 square by 2g so from here we can so manometric efficiency is given as 0 0.8 static lift is 30 meter and let us substitute expression for h so we can obtain u2 square minus u1 square by 2g is equals to 30 by 0 0.8 which is 37.5 meter now u2 and u1 this can be related to the diameters because in this way because u a speed at any uh, radial uh, location will be pi dn by 60 where d is the diameter so u2 by u1 is d2 by d1 and in the problem it is mentioned that d1 is half of d2 so here we can obtain u2 is twice u1 let us substitute this in the previous expression so we have previously obtained u2 square minus u1 square by 2g is 37.5 so this gives u2 this now we are substituting uh, u2 in terms of u1 so 4 u1 square minus u1 square by 2g is 37.5 so this will give u1 as 15.66 meter per second so u2 will be 2 times 15.66 will be 31.32 meter per second 
Now, the quantity of interest here is the least impeller diameter, least diameter of the impeller, which is the let us find the outer diameter, because in inner diameter will be half of that. So, outer diameter can be written as u. So, we know u 2 is pi d 2 n by 60. So, d 2 will be u 2 times 60 by pi n. So, let us substitute u 2 pi and n is given as 1000. So, d 2 is 0 0.6 meter. So, this is the least diameter outer diameter of the impeller required to make a flow through the pump having uh, a static lift of 30 meter. So, with this I am ending today's lecture. Thank you.